Sifu Wing Lam performs the entire set at normal speed. The continuous five elements form is learned after mastering the individual five elements set. In the five elements set, each line trains a different kind of energy and strength. These lines are repeated over and over until your body is familiar with the energy of each individual movement. The continuous five elements set trains you to combine these five energies continuously and fluently. It also teaches you to diversify from one movement to the next. In addition, this set is the basic training for learning the applications of the Xing Yi system. This set will be taught in seven lessons. In each lesson, hand movements will be taught first, followed by footwork and ending with details. The movements will be shown from both sides and also from the front. After all seven lessons have been taught, combat applications will be demonstrated. When learning the set, begin training with slow and soft movements and strive for correctness. When you're comfortable with the movements, train with increased speed and power focusing on the intention of each movement. Cross both hands in front of your body. Separate hands to Santi stance. Form fists. Right straight punch, left straight punch, right straight punch. Left foot pivots on heel to point straight ahead. Left step forward to Santi stance. Left step forward with right following step. Left back step, right step forward. The hands are held at heart height, with the right hand over the left. The straight punches are also at the level of the heart. Shift your body weight to the right leg as the left foot pivots on the heel. In Xing Yi, this is known as the rooster's leg independent standing posture. During the straight punches, the back hand draws back to the side of the abdomen at the level of the navel. In the opening hand movement, the hands cover the body's center line as if trapping a punch. The straight punches are all directed at the center line of an imaginary opponent. Left back fist, double hand chop, right hammer fist to left palm, simultaneous right block and left straight punch. Left, then right forward steps, then stomp. Right forward step to San T stance. The energy in the double chop movement should be directed to the edge of the palms. In the right down punch, both hands should be in contact with the lower abdomen. For the block and punch, the back of the right fist is in front of the forehead.
The back fist is aimed at the center line, but the double chops are aimed slightly at an angle. In the block and punch position, the punch is aimed at the center line, but the right fist is just to the right of center. Right uppercut, left downward palm strike, left back fist. Right back step with left following back step. Left forward step with right following step. Left foot raises to single leg stance. The footwork in this lesson is fast and agile and should be linked to the hand movement so that the body moves harmoniously. Coordinate the final left back fist with the raising of the left leg and the twisting of the right fist. All the movements in this lesson are aimed towards the center line. For the left downward palm strike, the left fist moves up the right forearm and then strikes down as the right palm pulls back. Right downward palm strike, right back fist, left downward palm strike. Left forward step with right following step, left half step, right forward step with left following step. The power of the downward palm strikes comes from linking the hand movements to the movements of the torso and lower body. The energy of the downward palm strike is directed outwards and downwards, like the energy of a swinging axe. After the right palm strike, the right hand pulls back with the intention of grabbing or ripping. During the downward palm strikes, the back hand pulls back to the side of the body. The palm strikes and back fist are all directed at the center line. Right straight punch. Set both fists on the lower abdomen. Right back fist, left downward palm strike. Right half step, left forward step with right following step. Step the left foot to triangle stance. Right dragon step to twist stance.
both fists set near the Dantian, with the heel of the palm and inner forearm contacting the abdomen. During the dragon step, the right fist and the right foot come up. During the dragon step, you should feel tension in the right inner hip, the right knee, and the right ankle. In the twist stance, the toes of the left foot are in line with the right heel. In triangle stance, the toes are two to three inches apart, with the energy of the legs and hips squeezing inwards. This is lesson six. Lesson six merely repeats all of the exact movements from lessons one through five linked together but performed in the opposite direction returning from the original point from which you started the main difference is that the starting position of lesson six is a twist stance rather than the Santi stance from lesson one. As a measure of the consistency of the quality of your movements, Lesson 6 should cover the same amount of distance as Lessons 1 through 5. Here again is a repeat of lessons one through five. Watch the way that the movements are linked together into one continuous line without any apparent break between the moves of the individual preceding lessons. Form fists, right straight punch, left straight punch. Open both hands, double down block and press down. Both hands press against the thighs. Left forward step with right following step. Right, then left back step right forward step into Santi stance, left back step to Wuji stance. In the twist stance for the left straight punch, the right foot is at a 45 degree angle. Right foot remains in this position for the Santi stance and for the Wuji stance.
When executing the straight punches, the upper body should be turned at approximately 45 degrees so that the power comes from the turning of the hips and abdomen. At the conclusion of the form, return to Wu Ji stance and stand still for a few moments while the Qi circulates through your body. The first application is for the straight punch combination of lesson one. Sifu Lam attacks with the left straight punch, which is blocked by his opponent. Sifu Lam then attacks with the right straight punch. Xing Yi's aggressive footwork allows Sifu Lam to close the gap quickly and effectively. As Sifu Lam's left hand pulls back, it traps the opponent's blocking arm. This is the application for the back fist double chop sequence of lesson two. Sifu Lam attacks with a right straight punch that is blocked by his opponent. Sifu Lam follows with a left back fist. The opponent blocks the back fist, so Sifu Lam follows with the double chop technique. Sifu Lam's footwork enables him to overwhelm his opponent. Sifu Lam's right leg is positioned behind his opponent, enabling him to execute a takedown. The initial straight punch is aimed low, and the back fist targets the face. The left hand extends to balance the body's movements. Here is the application for the simultaneous block and punch followed by right uppercut combination. Sifu Lam simultaneously blocks and counters his opponent's attack. When his left punch is blocked, he follows with the right punch to the chin. Because his opponent is moving forward in this sequence, Sifu Lam does not need to close the gap. Sifu Lam's stance is rooted, and his strikes are compact and powerful. This is the application for the dragon step. Sifu Lam protects his center with a right block. He simultaneously extends a right thrust heel kick to his opponent's rib cage. This kick could also be aimed at the opponent's knee, shin, or instep and executed by driving the foot down. Sifu Lam performs the entire set again at normal speed. The important points of Xing Yi practice must be observed throughout all of the movements of the set. The spine should maintain its natural curvature, with the head having the intention of reaching up. The shoulders should be relaxed, with the intention of sinking down, and the chest must be empty. If the external movements are performed correctly, Qi will flow smoothly through the body. As you practice this set, Strive to link the energy of each movement to that of the next, so that ultimately the entire set will be one unbroken thread of chief.